continue on cooking. Continue on cooking. Right. As, as, as you went from the SDR and became, you know, top two AE. in IBM um, right. and, and so. making your way to AE, continue that story. Awesome. So, yeah. So, I literally applied to one job. And this is why I be feeling like all my stories is really, once again, back to the alignment. Because something within me knows when it's time to pivot. That's mm. also a very crucial thing in your career, right? Like, you can get stuck. And I hate to say that, but if you don't put yourself first at all times during your career, you can get stuck in certain places because you may just get comfortable there. You may feel like, okay, it's a reach for me. Whereas I was just always like, I can do this quicker. Like I know somebody can hire me. I know I can prove the value to somebody that I know how to do this. And second, I had started shadowing, which is something I always tell people, take advantage as a SDR BDR, shadow the calls that you're on with the reps that you're mm. passing these opportunities to. Mm. That is the easiest way to pick up on what they're doing, the questions they're asking. You're mastering the discovery questions for the solution that you're into. You're understanding how they may negotiate. You're understanding how to objection handle. You're, abstand, uh, you're starting to understand how these conversations flow, how the tech sale process runs, and not just funneling yourself into like, I'm just in this role that's very metric based. It can expose you to so much more about the whole sales process because you have to learn how to work with the team. Mm. I said I didn't like being a sales engineer, but one thing I learned once I became an AE was I can't make this happen without my sales engineer here. So like if I'm paired with somebody, now think about it this way. We get on a call today, I, I convinced you, I'm like, yeah, you know, I think that, you know, you have a great headset on right now, but I could sell you something that, you know, gives you a little better sound quality. It's going to connect to the podcast, get it, the best, the guests are going to hear you. And then you come on and my sales engineer comes on, he comes to show you how to put the headset in and connect it. And it, it, he, he doesn't know how to connect it right now. Mm. Everything that I have said is not credible to you anymore. <laughs> and that's just a very simple example. I'm just trying to help y'all understand the dynamic and the duo because when I started to really make some good money in my career it was because I had that sales engineer. Mm. I had that mm. and we meshed and it was just magic. But I went to One Trust, so I leave IBM and I, I'll never forget, I call One Trust. They're the fastest growing startup. Um, they're a privacy security and GRC, so compliance, governance, which at the time I didn't know what I was stepping into, but this market is, <laughs> let me tell you something. If you wanna make some money in tech sales, Security, 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 AI, cloud, data. Listen, one thing about it too, as a seller, position yourself where you can sell. Mm. Position yourself in hot markets, right? Mm. You don't want to go sell. Mainframes is not easy to sell, y'all. Like, so I went from mainframes and storage, which is a very hard sell. And this is also something you have to understand when you're in sales and why I say sometimes doing research on your technical, uh, doing research and having technical understanding helps you become a better player because mm. When I look at a deal cycle, so for people who are new, a deal cycle means how long does it take me to get a company to purchase this? Really important, really important. These are questions you should definitely ask when you're being interviewed. What is the average deal cycle of this product? Some things take 12 to 24 months to sell. What's up Ladder Climbers, it's Antoine Wade. I wanted to interrupt this video to talk to you guys about Course Careers. Course Careers is the place that you guys need to go if you have a high interest into tech sales. They will help you gain the skills that you need so that you can enter the tech sales world to make a whole bunch of money. Tech sales salaries early on is about $60,000, guys. That's a good salary. And with OTEs, you can make anywhere from $85 to $90,000. If you have an interest in tech sales, check out Course Careers, link in the description. And don't forget to use Antoine50 so that you can get a $50 discount off of Course Careers. See you guys in tech sales. Mm -hmm. So what that tells you as a seller is you need a very extensive pipeline. You're going to be hunting more in those types of solutions, right? Whereas other things like security, regulations are coming out, HIPAA's out. You got all these things that need to happen now. There's a more of a buyer's incentive and there's more of a call to action or a use case, as we call it, for this customer to purchase this solution. So I step in now from one extreme selling storage. I mean, we rolling. From the day I got there, I closed the deal within six weeks. You know, it was like, there's no time. We have customers all day. Uh, GDPR comes out. You know what I mean? You have CPRA, CCPA. All these regulations are starting to hit the U.S. as I get in this role. And I'm like, I, I, I when I was interviewing, I interviewed for a small, medium business. And they're like, you're coming from IBM. We think you should be on, <laughs> you should be on uh, large corporate accounts. 
So I get to One Trust and completely new industry. I had to get two certs within six months, which were the hardest tests I've ever had to take. Like going back to college, like harder than that type thing. And certificates, a lot of people, you know, say college or this. Certificates are very, very hard to study for, self-taught. Mm -hmm. And it. I think they show employers a lot more initiative because it's something you really have to put the time on top of working into um, and, you know, going through a course or something like that. I always encourage it because it really, really can accelerate your learning. You have to learn something very, very hard by yourself. And I think you grasp the concepts and remember it a lot more that way personally. Um, but um, I get there and I crush it. I knew I was like, I have to crush this because my my mindset was. I'm going to go do this now. I'm going to get here. I'm going to get to the basic, biggest accounts and now I can go back to a big company and be on the biggest accounts there. So it was all still a strategy. Like mm. I'm going to take another step back, which wasn't a step back. Really, it was just a pivot. Right. You know, this was more of like a pivot. So I get into large corporate, crush it. Number one on my team within six weeks. And what I did to effectively really ramp up that quickly was I just dived head in. I like didn't do anything for like the first six months, honestly, but shadow. And then once I felt comfortable, I hopped in very quickly. Within three weeks, I was on customer calls. But what that gave me the ability to do was learn. Because mm -hmm. when you just sit back in shadow, you don't get faced with the objections. You don't get faced with You have to learn to handle this really quickly. So I told them, I told the dude, I said, I want to basically be equipped to have my own con customer conversations within the first month. What do I need to do? I went to my management and my teammates. What do I need to do to have these conversations? So it took me role playing with my manager, calling him like, I need you to act like the customer and I need you to help me get prepared to have these conversations. I was very aggressive and something that I will tell everybody is if you want to get into sales, you got to get aggressive because mm. the money is to be is there to be made, but you have to get super aggressive once you get in the role with, and maybe aggressive is not the best word, but super focused and super disciplined into like, this is what I want and I need to create an effective plan once again mm. on how I can do this start having customer conversations. And I express to them as well, like I like to speak. I want to be the customer facing. I want to fly out to clients. So I expressed what my vision of how I needed to operate in this space was. And they gave me the tools and enablement to empower me to do that. Mm -hmm. And within six months, I got promoted to an enterprise account executive. And from there, I was number one in, on my team two times. So one as a small middle business, one as an enterprise account executive. And I started to just get my motion and my mojo. And like I said, I got a super bomb sales. It was just like the, the dream team. Like one of my other sales uh, specialists, we were like freaking brand to the point the company, no matter what territories we had, they kept us together, mm. period. Mm. He got promoted. They're like, they got some type of magic. We keeping them together. And my sales engineer loved working with me. I loved working with her and we would constantly request the management. Can we stay together? So we started closing deals like back to back. And I'm like, I love this. Like, mm. this is what I've been dreaming of doing, you know? <laughs> so it's <laughs> just like, like I said, it's, it's a lot of strategy with me, a lot of dedication and time and, and late nights pitching, practicing, understanding the discovery questions. I mean, that was like one of the first things I did. I, I went to, to other reps, like, can you send me a list of the top questions that you ask on a call? Then I could start to understand what they're really searching for and what are we like searching for with the product. So I would say those are the, the tips and how I seem to navigate very quickly and rise to the top was, yeah, it was just going full throttle when I got there. It was just like, all right, you know, you came here, you know, you want to be an enterprise account executive. You have the opportunity in your hand. Now you need to take advantage of it, you know? So. And, well, and, and Kayla, you said it, right? I You asked for it. You had a vision yeah. of what that was going to look like. You shared that with your leadership team. You said, I mm -hmm. want to be an enterprise ex executive ASAP as fast as I can. What do I need to do in order for me to get to those right. levels? It was cold calling. It was practicing. It was working with your management team and they gave you the tools. That's the same exact tools I've used to get promoted every single year. I can tell you yeah. just like that, Kayla, is asking for it telling people how serious you are about it, holding yourself accountable, also aligning with the, 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 the strategy that your boss or your leaders has in front of you, right? They're going to give you the tools that you need, but you need to make a, you need to sell yourself on, and you also need to sell them on if you are able to attain these goals that you guys have aligned with, 
what's next for you, right? I want to be an AE, all right? I'm a junior account executive. I want to be an AE in six months. Okay, well, you know what, uh, Ms. Kayla, what is it that I need to do? All right, you said, right. Antoine, this is it, what you need to do. This is who you need to work with more, and this is the skills that you need to brush upon. You do that, and you keep checkpoints in, and you are sharing your results with your leadership team. I'm going to go to Ms. Kayla and say, hey, you know what? This is the results. These are the things that I'm doing. She's going to be like, you, you accomplished that, Antoine. Here, here's, yeah. your, here's your ticket to your enterprise account executive where you ultimately make more money. But something you also said, too, focus. Focus. It was, you know, within that first six months, head down on yeah. calls, in meetings, working with some of the best. You didn't necessarily say it, but I know what you meant by it is you work with some of the best account executives as well. So you wanted to position yourself right. around the best, listening on those calls, asking what questions that they ask. What are some right. objectives they've gotten as well, too? I remember getting into sales, um, Kayla. My first year in 2018, right? Already VP and so forth, making over $200,000 a year. The best sales rep uh, or the best sales rep, his name was Craig Jack at the time, flew out to his house, sat there with him and his family for an entire weekend, my own dime, right? Obviously, because it was a weekend and right. somebody would have done it. But I wanted to get that time with him because you don't often get people's time, right? Took his right. family out to dinner. Just learn the game from somebody who's a little bit more experienced. I look at it this way. When I want to accomplish something in life, when I want to accomplish something that's high that I've never done before, why not invest in myself to b get it right. from somebody so that I can shortcut that amount of time that I need to put in? I don't need to go and do it all by my own, right? Yeah. There's people who've done it already, right? And they can and, put you on game and, how, and help you avoid so many mistakes that now there's so much stuff that I tell people coming into the game. I didn't know. Right. I didn't know this. I had to figure it out. And like you said, something I always do is I figure out who is the number one performer? Mm. Who is it? Mm. I need to communicate with you. Mm. I need to see what you're doing. Something about what you're doing is Dorothy. separating from everybody else. So right. what is it that you're doing? And I'm not just asking you, hey, can you just tell me a secret? So you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm coming to you like, hey, you are effective at what you're doing. I love what you're doing. I love your results. Can you share some of your success stories with me? Mm. Tell me the stories about how you were able to position yourself for this. You know what I mean? And even here at Microsoft is another pivot, right? Mm. So I loved where I was at. Love. This was the first time I loved because I told you I was in two products I did not like. So now I finally am at a place where I'm like, this is a product I'm passionate about. I was mm. in data governance. So I'm helping companies to companies I go swipe my cre credit card at every day, companies that I use every day. I'm on the phone with them and I'm like, we don't have a sense on where our data sensitive information lives. Mm. Like, is this real? It was a shock to me because I'm thinking we're so far ahead in technology. You know what I mean? So now I'm like, wow, like this is, I love talking about this. I love helping customers to understand, no, we really do have to protect our data. Like this is the replications of repercussions of not being able to do this. And it was something I just became passionate about. So it was kind of bittersweet when I had to make the decision to go to Microsoft. But I was like, you had a plan. You said you was going to stick here for like about two years and pivot again. Microsoft came calling. Mm. I didn't even apply to Microsoft. I got a message on LinkedIn, like we're building a new sales team in Atlanta and we want you to interview. Mm. And who's going to turn down? You know, Microsoft comes knocking on your door. You going to answer. I ain't going to lie. You going to answer them. You going to answer those phones. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but I was so happy in my role and I was like, 